What's up, you guys? Today, we are going over a little scenario. Spoofing DNS and delivering malware? It is possible. And today, we are going to go over exactly that. But analyzing the packet captures in Wireshark. And going over a little, a little attack scenario, a little DNS spoofing scenario. And if you don't know what Wireshark is, it is a network packet analyzer. Packet captures, aka PCAPs, just analyzing packets sent over a network. And DNS spoofing is when attackers intercept DNS requests and send fraudulent responses. Per this diagram that I am going to edit in, so you get a little visual. Take some time, really read it, yeah. And DNS, domain name system, translates IP addresses into domain names and vice versa, technically. So for DNS spoofing, um, the attacker kind of has to send the fake response before the real response can be sent. So it's kind of like a, like a who can send the response the fastest kind of thing. And it is dangerous because it allows attackers to reroute traffic to malicious domains, like what we will see in a second. Quick interruption to talk about today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a learning platform designed to be uniquely effective. Their first principle approach helps you build understanding from the ground up. Each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that lets you play with concepts, a method proven to be six times more effective than watching lecture videos. Plus, all content on Brilliant is crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, and more. Brilliant helps you build your critical thinking skills through problem solving, not just memorizing. So while you're building real-world knowledge on specific topics, you'll also be becoming a better thinker. Learning just a little every day is one of the most important things you can do, both for your personal and professional development. Brilliant helps you build real-world knowledge in just minutes a day, the complete opposite of mindless scrolling. Brilliant makes it super easy to learn anywhere, right on your phone, with fun lessons you can do whenever you have the time. Whether you're diving into a new topic or just doing a quick practice session, you can level up on the go in just minutes. Turn your curiosity into comprehension. With math, programming, data, and AI courses, designed to build real skill and develop your intuition. Build and use real formulas to solve real problems in business and everyday life. Peek under the hood of large language models like ChatGPT to understand the concepts powering today's technology. Apply data skills to real world scenarios, like running simulations to predict the winner of the World Cup. Now, to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, there's a link. Link in description also. Also, link in the comments. Or scan the QR code on screen. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now, back to the content. And right here, I got this PCAP that we were about to analyze from the HoneyNet project. Um, URL up here, Forensic Challenge 14 Weird Python. 18th of March, 2015. Your boss John went to a BYOD conference lately. Um, incorrect grammar, but we're gonna move on. Yeah, he's that kind of security guy. After some mumble about targeted attacks happening during the event, your team finally got their hands on a PCAP with his traffic. Your colleague Pete Galloway investigated the incident. Yesterday, he casually mentioned that he found some weird Python bytecode, but couldn't make much sense out of the random payloads yet. Today, Pete didn't come to work. Five minutes ago, he sent a company-wide mail with a total of four words. Fuck you, I quit. What has happened? Ah, not Pete. Not Pete Galloway. Uh, Pete Galloway was a good guy, you know. I don't know why he, I don't know why he said fuck you, I quit. Pete Galloway, you know, I knew Pete Galloway back in the day. Uh, ha, just kidding. I didn't know Pete Galloway. I think Pete Galloway is a fake guy, but I digress. Okay. Moving on, PCAP time. Here is the dude's traffic from the conference. We're looking for something malicious. We're looking for something malicious. Lots of TCP traffic going on right here. But since we're looking for DNS spoofing, let's go up here, filter by DNS, woo. And then we are here. I wonder if I can zoom. Okay, that's a little better. Now you can kind of see the traffic a little bit more up close. So, so in this storyline, the dude from the conference is trying to download a game, some type of, some type of ninja game or something. So 
you see here, ninjagame.org. And then you see the IP 81.166.122.238. This right here is the spoofed website from the attacker. That's the attacker's IP. It beat this one. Right here, 81.166, attacker's IP. And then it, it officially connected to download a zip file containing the game. Attacker's response right here arrives first, winning the race condition. So the attacker intercepted the real request with the IP address 81.166, their own server, before the real DNS server, Google 8.8.8 could get to it. As you can see down here, if I could really zoom in, <laughs> you have rvcartel.org. IP address, the IP address of the attacker. And right here, source IP to destination. This 172.16 is the dude at the conference's IP. 1.166 attackers. And then this right here, the 207, that one's the real site. Real site, real site, fake, 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 real. So I'll just put like a little text diagram or something here, like listing out the IPs. So you can, you can keep track. So he's downloading a file. Ah, what do we need to filter by to see more of this? HTTP. Here. Here, let me zoom, let me zoom, let me zoom. Here. What I'm clicking on, nv2-pc.zip. That is the zip file with the game executable that he is downloading. But it's the attacker's executable, which is actually malware. By filtering all the requests that have an HTTP user agent, but don't match the browser's user agent, we can identify all of the HTTP requests made by the malware. So, for example, down here, you see it's a percent encoded URL, which we're going to get to in a second, but this is the attacker's um, post request. And you can see down here the user agent. Mozilla 5.0 Macintosh Intel Mac OS X 10 10 2 blah blah blah. Now, any one of these up here, actual legit user agent. Mozilla, Windows, NT, Mozilla. So legit, we have Windows. Malicious. For malicious, we have Mac, which doesn't match up because I'm assuming this guy is using a Windows PC because all the rest of the traffic is Windows. So that doesn't match up. Chrome, 40.0. Legit traffic, Chrome, 41.0. Different versions of Chrome, different operating systems. Different from the baseline. Sounds a little sus. I'll put them over here, write out the differences so you can see visually more so the differences in the user agent. Now, using a older version of Chrome, it kind of, the malware attempts to kind of blend in with traffic and blend in with older systems or evade detection by signature-based systems that track newer versions. That's why, always update, <laughs> patch and update. Now that we know the malicious user agent, we are gonna put that in our filter. Boom, boom. There it is again. These ones are kind of what we are looking at. Now, the get requests were made by the dropper to download the malware, and the post requests were the files being exfiltrated. Right here, post, post, post. And you can see the files, um, they're percent encoded right now, but we, but we will decode them in a second. As you can see here, Emirates e-ticket PDF, things of that nature, desktop documents. So here we have Cyberchef did a little URL decode. Here's the uh, here's the one for Wireshark right here. Uh, here is the decoded one. This is the file path. Users admin desktop sensitive documents dot doc. So that is what is being exfiltrated. Here um, we can copy another one just for shits and giggles. Copy that in here. Here, see users admin documents private affair holiday. Ooh, Emirates ticket one PDF. Not the guy from the conference having an affair and getting Emirates tickets. He must be rich. He must be rich. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Holiday. 
he put his Emirates ticket PDF in a folder called Affair. Oh my god, imagine having an affair and you have a folder on your on your on your computer called Affair. Okay, anyways, that's funny. So yeah. So this attack, um, in my opinion, and I'm pretty sure the rest of you would agree, is on purpose, very planned out. The attacker had to go to the dude's conference um, and then set up Wireshark and then analyze the network traffic and then maybe the dude just like got caught in the analysis and um, the dude was like, well, I'm just gonna deliver malware to you. Dude accidentally got exposed for having an affair. How to protect against DNS spoofing, you may ask. Use DNSSEC. Number one, educate users. Do not download files from random sources. Monitor for sus DNS requests and anomalies. And just for general malware tips, regularly update. Like, like the Chrome version. You saw what happened. Update your systems. Update your software. Get some endpoint detection software. Download that agent on that endpoint. You got it. And keep an eye on unusual HTTP requests. Strange user agents. Yeah, that's kind of the gist of it. So thank you guys for watching. Um, like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, whatever they say. And don't have an affair where someone can capture your packets. Because we will find your Emirates PDF ticket and your folder titled Affair. So, lesson learned. See you guys in the next video.